Hi everyone, I'm Victoria, and I'm going to talk about new and experimental CSS tools in Firefox. This is my backstory. I've been bouncing between being an artist, a developer, and a designer. And two years ago, I ended up in a perfect intersection of designing developer tools for Firefox. I started writing CSS in the bad old days. These two lines together were problematic 10 years ago. Does anyone else have this burned into your brain? It's the IE6 floating double margin bug. Um, this used to be a problem, too. Um, browsers disagreed about basic box model behavior. I used to write websites with this technique. Um, you had to imagine this big negative margin reaching out the side of your browser window that a sidebar beams into. And maybe you had fake columns made from a repeating image going down the right side. Uh, because making a website that was flexible with sidebars was really hard back then, we actually called it the Holy Grail. And this is a Wikipedia article image on Holy Grail. And I like that the platonic ideal of a website has a sidebar just for ads. <laughs> Those were the days I described my job as working in the CSS debugging mines. It was pretty dark, tenuous, lots of trial and error, and these problems that felt very unknowable. Thankfully, things have gotten a lot better since then. Um, we've had very smart people making new tools like Firebug, which is the ancestor of all the tools we're talking about today. All the browsers got better at following specs, and better CSS specs were created. I found this on the W3C website where they talk about how CSS is made, and apparently it is a long and treacherous process. We've rebuilt the mines. Now we have a web we can call modern. They're no longer just hacks. They function in a way that makes sense. And we at Firefox have been excited about making tools for this new web. Um, in, the in the past few years, we've been working on seven of them. So it all started with CSS Grid, one of these new sensible layout features that easily achieves holy grail. It actually blows it out of the water. Um, but it has a learning curve. Uh, my colleague, Jen Simmons, who's spoken here before, and members of my team three years ago built the Grid Inspector. It was powerful to be able to visualize grids so clearly when debugging and tweaking your layouts. This was a big inspiration for all the tools that came after. And in fact, it inspired the creation of a new team. A year and a half ago, Firefox DevTools created a subgroup called Layout Tools, which focuses on all things HTML, CSS, web design. Um, we're spread across four time zones. Most of us work from home. And we collaborate with others in Mozilla, like the rendering engine team and MDN. So the next thing we worked on was Shapes, the Shape Path Editor. Um, CSS Shapes allows you to clip elements or create shapes for text to flow around, as you can see here. Our tool gives you a way to directly manipulate in the page, which was new for us. Um, you can create some really polished designs, like this example at the Event Apart website. Uh, next, our next big project was fonts, the font editor. Um, we already had this font panel in Firefox that just showed you what fonts you're using. Um, but now we gave you all these sliders so you can fine tune your properties. Um, a big part of this project was adding variable fonts, which is a way to have infinite variations within one font file. So now you have very fine-grained values for all the usual um, axes, and you can also define custom axes, um, which our tool detects and shows here. As you can see, yeast, gravity, and temperature, those aren't regular things. So here's a demo of how it looks um, that is having a little <laughs> trouble loading. Um, but if you can imagine it, um, Yeast just kind of like blows up the letters and gravity kind of like makes them droop. Uh, we also have a way to hover over the font names to highlight where they're being used in the page. So it was exciting to support these new CSS specs. These three tools together can power some pretty advanced graphic design possibilities on the web. But they are kind of cutting edge specs based on the browser support, um, almost there. So you still have to like think about fallbacks, definitely. Um, and we didn't only want to think about, we didn't only want to work on tools for these new specs. We were drawn to more common problems. And of course, that led us to Flexbox. Perhaps you recognize these orange and purple boxes. 
I spent a lot of time with the CSS Tricks Ultimate Guide to Flexbox um, because, like Grid, there's a learning curve, and we wanted to help with this. So we had to level up our own understanding of Flexbox, and we wrote a survey to ask people to rank these issues, um, all the different issues that you could um, have with Flexbox, what you would want a tool to show you, like the different axes or um, sizes, size changes. Um, this was really useful. Like, we learned um, that, like, min, max, width, and height, which was something that we wanted to push off till some, like, future 2.0 version, was the number one feature that people asked for. So we're like, okay, we have to do that. Um, we got to work drawing a lot of very ugly boxes, just trying to, like, wrap our own minds around, like, a mental model of Flexbox. And we ended up with this, which we call the mini-map of our flex item. Uh, you'll see in um, our tool. Um, so you see the flex spaces there in blue. The pink arrow is where it wants to grow. And then the purple lock is where a max width kind of clamped it to a smaller size. We also show you steps of the rendering engine. Um, and this is one of the things that was possible only because we were able to collaborate with our Gecko engineers. So now you can see exactly what the browser wanted to size the Flexbox at every step. Um, we put all these badges in the markup view so we can really quickly jump into our new features like this. Um, and we try and do a better job of kind of relating things in the tool to what's in the page so that you can just hover and it highlights. So, um, I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> All right, so after we worked on this tool, we decided to double down on research. Uh, this is Devin, the DevTools Otter, our mascot for this survey project. Um, this was a really healthy thing for us to do because normally in our team, we do a lot of like design by dog fooding where um, everyone on the team, designers, PMs, like we've, we all have a lot of experience as web de developers and designers ourselves. So we come with a lot of opinions on how things should work and what the biggest problems are. Uh, now we were like really gonna just talk to our audience and our community, ask them for help. Um, we had we determined 20 different CSS and web design challenges, and we asked people to rank them. Uh, and then we ended up with a whole ton of data um, that definitely made some impact on our roadmaps. We knew that people especially wanted export changes and layout debugging. So I'm gonna talk about changes first, and you saw a great demo from Harold earlier. This is one of those age-old issues that we all got used to, not b having good persistence in browser dev tools. I had uh, some dramatic moments in meetings where I yelled about how all of our tools are a ticking time bomb of data loss. And I know that the data loss is real, because I asked, how often do you lose CSS changes by accidentally refreshing, and many people said weekly or more often. This is just our first step to solving this problem, and I definitely give credit to Edge and Chrome here for their changes panels that came before ours. Uh, it doesn't get rid of the bomb yet. We want to do that later, <laughs> uh, where we actually persist the changes, but for now, it's just easy to jump in, um, have all your changes related to different elements, and then copy them out. You can either copy all the changes or copy one rule at a time to paste it to your code. So the next thing we did was inactive CSS, and this isn't its real icon. It barely ha is a, its own feature. Um, it just grays out CSS that doesn't affect the page. Um, but this solves one of the top issues we found in a new survey we built on what are the most important specific CSS bugs, starring Picasso Fox. Um, this is what the bug was kind of called in the survey. Why is this CSS property not doing anything? Um, and besides that this came up at the top of our survey, we knew that there were similar tools uh, that actually had some good research behind them. Uh, Sarah Lim and her colleagues at Northwestern um, built a similar tool that grayed out those um, ineffective 
CSS lines and found that novice developers were 50% faster at building complex features when they could just ignore all the irrelevant code that wasn't actively affecting the page. So this is kind of how ours looks. Um, you'll see that that last line is not doing anything. Um, if you're debugging something else, you can just ignore it. Or if you want to know why it's not doing anything, you can hover over it and find out that justify items is actually a grid uh, property and it's not um, a flex property. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is like my ideal feature. I call it low-hanging UX fruit because it has very low like risk of it's not like you need to like really nail the implementation. It's just like I grade out the text. <laughs> it's not a whole new interface. You don't really have to discover it or um, learn how to use it. It's just like there, and it improves the whole workflow intuitively. Um, you can test this out now in Firefox Nightly. Uh, we're also hoping to release it in Firefox 70. So along the way, we've also had some accessibility features developed. And this is actually done sort of by a separate team that's mostly one person, Yura. And this year, thankfully, he had an intern, Malia. They've been doing some amazing work. Um, and I'm going to pick on the meetup.com website, but like every website has problems like this. So this shows you the uh, basic tool. Is, it's like an accessibility tree that you can inspect if you want. It's quite detailed. Um, most people will want to check for issues. So we have a little audit option here. And once you have that going, you'll be able to see every um, element where there's a problem. So here we can see that all those teal colored links on the Meetup website don't have high enough contrast. And also the icons don't have um, title tags. We have added uh, color contrast to our color picker. And we're also in the middle of creating color contrast ranges so that if you have like a background that has a gradient, you'll be able to see um, how good or bad the contrast gets at every end of the spectrum. We're also working on a color blindness simulator. So you, you can see how um, this is useful for something like this, like a ticketing website where th all the seats are just these like colored circles. It's really hard to tell the difference between them if you have some of these vision impairments. A couple other tools I wanted to mention. We have a print simulator um, that you can click to work on and inspect your print styles. And we're working on a browser compatibility panel. This is kind of like caniuse.com, but it just shows, you the, just shows you the issues that are related to the element that you have selected. So next up, I just want to talk about some speculative ideas and dreams. These are all just like mock-ups in my idea pile. Uh, we don't know what they'll happen, but we're hoping for some of these. Um, the first one is inspired by how much I dislike the markup view, because it's just like we just like pushed view source into this little column, and it's a tag soup, and it's so long, it's really tough to manage. Um, First, I worked on like maybe if we had back and forward buttons so you could like navigate through the elements that you've selected. Um, I did some Twitter polls on this, and no one understood that that's what those back and forward like, buttons were for. Um, I also just thought about like could we make the search like way better or like fix the breadcrumbs? Like I don't, I'm not sure how people really use that. I finally kind of pushed those aside and said, like, maybe we could totally redesign the markup view so that it has like a very concise syntax. And um, you know, just like one element per line, and it's just focused on getting to the CSS faster. Because usually people aren't using this to like modify their HTML. They're usually using it as a navigational tool to get to their CSS. Another thing that we've been talking about for a really long time, actually, is multiple viewport device mode. So um, you can check it out on maybe different types of phones that you, your website supports. Um, you could have groups, perhaps, and just like be able to um, edit all of them at the same time. We've been thinking a lot about, like, do we want to get more in line with things? 
um, to edit your CSS like in the page? Should DevTools be like kind of hidden away at the bottom? Do you want more visual tools? Um, our element in, um, picker could be a lot better. Like it hasn't changed that much since Firebug, and maybe we should be able to like right click on the white space and. If there's a collapsed margin there, like there should definitely be like a big like <laughs> info warning that says like that's what's happening. We're also thinking about like maybe you should be able to select multiple elements and kind of compare, see what how they relate to each other. There's a lot we can do. Um, we also really want to improve our flexbox and grid inspectors. Um, changes definitely needs persistence. And there are more tool tips we could add, like inactive CSS. I feel very limited sometimes. It's all very overwhelming. Um, our team is limited in what we can do. As the only designer for DevTools, I'm limited in the kind of long-term user research that I really want to do to learn more about how these, um, how people can have their workflows improved, um, what of these um, ideas that we should actually build and how they should work. These are all really hard questions. And that's why I look to the community. You could help. <laughs> and I know it's a lot. These are all lots of new tools, lots of CSS browser features. So I just want to ask you to do one thing, which is download Firefox nightly and use it for some of your work next week. And, and then talk to me. Like, let me know if it goes good or bad, if you um, save a bunch of time. Or if things are like confusing and buggy, I want to hear about all of that. I read all comments, and I will be replying to you. Um, I also have my whole design process open on GitHub, if you'd like to follow along. Um, your input gives us so much energy and the kind of data that it's really hard for us to find ourselves. Uh, and we really appreciate that kind of thing to help us make better tools. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. S send it to um, me on Twitter or or my email there. All right. Thank you. <laughs>